you and I, Panther fans and Rocket League fans alike. Welcome to the second half of the doubleheader. Glad you could hopefully maybe go and take a little halftime break and uh, get you some water, get you some something to eat. And Igneous is going to be in production. Jakey in the booth with me. We've got you and I goal, or excuse me, you and I purple against Buena Vista. How you doing, Jakey? Pretty good. How about yourself, Jaeger? Doing pretty good. Excited to have this next matchup already underway as we see this Beaver team already out the gate trying to get some points going here. This ball is going to be slowly floated in, but that is going to be quickly saved by Ryan, but to no avail. AJ, go ahead and get the score. Yeah, I just wasn't able to get the clear out of the box there for Ryan. He had Tonkin floating, waiting for that one, which definitely affected his touch, and AJ was able to clean that one up. All right, so 15 seconds already done and away in game one. You and I able to, again, have that suffocating offense. We saw that against that UW Superior game. Uh, the rotations were there initially. They were able to play at the pace that they wanted to. They were able to communicate the way that they wanted to. And we see this continue here as Ryan is able to get this one saved away. Yeah, you like to see that out of you and I. You know, they faltered a little bit in game three of the UW series, but looks like they're picking up right where they left off here. Um, coming out the gate strong. All right, so this ball lazily goes left-hand side. Double commit by Buena Vista. Open net opportunity for you oh. and I. TJ just misses it. And you don't like to see that. You, you, you want to have those put away uh, in the league matches here. That was a pretty open net. Uh, TJ, I didn't see how much boost he had, though. He might have been low. Yeah, as that one's quickly saved by Ryan, as that one kind of rattles up against the ground and top of the crossbar, but it just, you know, it, it's just one of those things that, you know, the ball's gonna fall your way sometimes, sometimes it doesn't. Yeah, but the important thing is, uh, we've seen a lot of pressure out here from you and I, so it's only a matter of time before they put another one through. All right, so 1 0, the current score, 3 15 in game one, already done and away with. Jakey, you've played a couple tournaments and back-to-back -back games. Is there any kind of things that you kind of have to tell yourself or remind yourself or think about as you go into, like, these quick succession matches? I think the important thing is to, to know that it's, this is a completely different team than what we just saw in the last series, you know? Uh, you got to adjust to kind of the, the skill level and the pace of play, even even when you see a drop in skill level, which I don't think we're going to see here in this match, but it can it can be disorienting at first. So it's important to figure out what we're dealing with early and, and adjust. Yeah, so is, is that kind of like the really good importance of game one is just to feel out your opponent? Is that is that mainly what game one is for? Of, of course, you obviously want to win game one, but, but what's the main game one aspect? Certainly, uh, feeling out the opponent is definitely the main goal in game one. That's why a lot of players don't really like three game series. They feel like game one is more or less a wash. And if, you, if you lose game one in a three game series, you know, you're putting yourself on match point immediately. So these game fives, which, which we see in NECC, are a lot more popular for that reason. Yeah, and already here, AJ's going to get this one right hand side takes it to himself and gets this one to go in. Yeah, he's able to put this one off the backboard. Uh, we see nobody, we see two people in net for Buena Vista. You'd like to see at least one person on backboard to defend a play such as the one we just saw there. Yeah, and at, at that point, do you think you're just kind of lulling them in a false sense of security and you just kind of go through, split the rotational defender or how, how do you get something like that just so easy? Yeah, it's just, uh, I think, reading the defense, which is what AJ was able to do there. He won he won the 50. Uh, he got kind of a favorable bounce to the backboard, and nobody there was ready for being a fist set. He recognized that. He knew he could he could win that ball, and he was able to put it in the back of the net. All right, ball's going to go ahead and get taken left-hand side. The maestro, he'll go ahead. He'll defer as TJ's going to apply this pressure, gets the bump off. 110 left to play. 
two-point deficit for the Beavers. Tonkin okay, will get the demo on Ryan, and that's another thing that we've noticed a lot, Jakey, is that you and I likes their demo play. Yeah, so we saw that early in the UW matchup as well. It's something that they are very comfortable doing, uh, and that opposing teams certainly are not as comfortable with. Yeah, and that that's kind of in my mind is what separates really good teams from not really good teams is like you know are you able to get the slide tackles in are you able to interrupt the flow are you able to get enough demos so you can start maybe running your offense right and are you overextending yourself when you're trying to do those things i think you and i does a pretty good job they're most oh this tj puts one through here they're doing a very good job of uh going for those demos and bumps on their way out as opposed to blindly driving in and keeping them in position while still being able to disrupt that defense. All right, as we see that goal there from TJ, just I, I feel like at that point, like you mentioned, Jakey, is just, you, you know, it's it's the overcommitment aspect of things. You know, you're down two with less than a minute to go. You kind of want to get quick succession goals. Can't get that one as... A double there from Tonkin tries to go, but no good. Ryan able to get his fifth save of the game, but this one's hammered away by AJ. Yeah, it seems like you and I is starting to run away with it a little bit here. As it looks like it's going to be a 4 0 victory for him in game one. Uh, we'll see if Univis can bounce back a little bit in game two. Yeah, so again, we kind of have to go into the mind of Buena Vista if you can, Jakey maybe think about it you know you get skunked out in game one you're not playing how you probably want to play how do you bounce back in a game two yeah i think it's important to uh recognize how you and i's offensive attack is orchestrated you know as you mentioned they love going for the bump plays so you got to be expecting that right out of the gate i think something that bina Vista can look for uh the best counter to bumps seems to be going for bumps yourself so we'll see if they can uh, get some clears out and maybe get some bumps on you and I's last man. Yeah, and that's another thing to notice as we see that scorecard go up and away is that zero shots on goal for Buena Vista. Currently a very abysmal offense from this BVU team. Yeah, we haven't been able to see him get the ball out of the zone very much. You and I's doing a very good job controlling the midfield. Uh, staying in the rotations and it's led to more or less an offensive onslaught. Yeah, he here do it. a quick save there for C Maestro and here comes the offense now for the Buena Vista Beavers. Ryan works at center gut. TJ just gets that one to save. It bounces off the top of the crossbar. Now that's something that you want to see from this Beaver team. Yeah, we're seeing a little bit of life here early in game two. Uh, hopefully they can continue. Already you and I trying to play their motion here as a double commit comes on the right hand side. But then again, C Maestro and Bulk interrupts each other and the pace definitely slowed down now. <laughs> There's another dangerous ball in the zone here. Wow, 50 that goes in your favor, JP. Yeah, now that... Not the touch we're looking for here. It looks like Ryan and Bulk again stepping on each other a little bit. Uh, yeah, I think that's just a communication thing. Somebody's got to get that thing out from in front of the net and into the corner to safety. And hopefully try to get some kind of third man play. We see Ryan last game able to get five saves. Try to get it there. Is this one, see Maestro, able to get a save there. But to no avail, TJ gets this one to go. Now again, we're seeing another onslaught of offense. Great job from AJ there. It can be tempting when the ball's sitting so close to your car to try to get a touch on it, but he knew leaving that one for the third man who had a better angle was the smart play there. So do you think maybe coming off of a 3-1 victory earlier in the day, do you think that has to deal with a little bit of the swagger that we're seeing from this UNI Purple team right now, Jakey? It definitely does play into the mojo. Uh, and more or less, uh, you're warm now too. You gotta remember, you're coming into that first game. You know, you might have had a few rank matches under your belt, but nothing, nothing like this. So, getting one game in where you're playing team versus team is a big advantage. 
And already you and I trying to keep this Beaver team scoreless as AJ is going to get this one right in the right hand side. I almost didn't think that angle was possible, but here we are. Yeah, he's able to find it there. I'm not sure how, but but he's able to do it. I think that's just a testament to that swagger that you're talking about. Absolutely. Yeah. And like you mentioned earlier, JP, it's it's the warmth. You've already played another team. You, you kind of stomped on him here. It's talking in the next two seconds. Gets this one to go. Yeah, big kickoff win from AJ here, and Tonkin does a nice job on the cheat up. He's able to uh, get the angle on that one and put it home. Already you and I meeting their goal total as they did in game one. And I don't really think there's been many shots on goal from this Univista squad. No, there hasn't. Like you said, no shots in game one. And I think they had one early, but it looks like they have two shots already in this game, so yeah, you'd like to see a, a little more, a little more offensive play from Buena Vista, but you and I is doing a good job keeping the ball in their half, and controlling that midfield like they like to do. AJ able to put this one in again from that right hand side. It's almost the same angle, so I, I just think that's maybe just part of what he's feeding, but you know, it, it definitely gets to go in. Certainly getting the job done here. You and I is already up 5-0. We haven't even hit the halfway point yet. Yeah. 2.47 left to play, and you and I currently dominating this Univista Beaver squad. Of course, the only win that Univista has comes in week two against UW Superior. So obviously you can see how that kind of breaks out in the conference. And you and I, again, trying to send this one home. Brian gets this one to save, but a quick follow-up there by AJ. He de he gets demo and he pays for it. Talk it. So kind of right-hand shot, working right to left, able to kind of get this one passed back. Yeah, another goal here from you and I. They just continuing this offensive onslaught. It's interesting that you mentioned Jaeger the, that their only win against UW, which we just saw at seven o'clock. Uh, I think UW is able to stick with you and I a little better than Buena Vista has so far, wouldn't you say? Yeah, I completely agree. One of the things that I've noticed that that UW Superior does a lot better is that their, their pace of play picked up, especially we saw that in game three, that they started to match what the UNI Panthers were giving them. And it's just one of those things that Buena Vista hasn't been able to, to match. Sure, their rotation has been there. Sure, their passing has been there, but the pace of play is not on the same level as you and I. Certainly not. That could be a testament to the different matchup that we're seeing in this game versus the UW game. You know, maybe UW matches up a little better with you and I, but Buena Vista matches up a little better against UW. It's, or that could be just maybe UW kind of finding their groove a little more towards the back half of the season here. Yeah, and that's definitely a possibility, you know, because you'll see inklings of greatness as you go throughout the game. It's just putting them all together in five-minute intervals in a best-of-five scenario. And that can be really difficult at times if, you you know, you, you get the mentals down or you get feeling really angry or you're not getting the, the plays that you want to play as this one's quickly bumped away by bulk. Yeah, I think that's something people don't really think about when you're watching Rocket League is, uh, yeah, these are people playing as well. And some days you're feeling it and some days you're not. Some days, like you said, you, you get in a bad mental spot. It's tough to get out of funks like that. Here we go, Ryan, able to finally put this one together uh, with C Maestro working that right-hand side. Yeah, he was able to get a quick follow-up touch there. Uh, off the corner to center that thing for Ryan, and we see a little bit of life here from Buena Vista. Yeah, that's going to be interesting to see too, you know, because I've also noticed that nothing to to say bad about our U and I Panthers, but they really do slow down the pace when they're up by a lot, and they are just, you know, they 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 kind of get a little sloppy, and they're not really playing 100 percent, 100 percent of the time. Uh, is that just because of the nature of the beast? Are you not on 100% of the time when you play? Uh, Jakey, you've played before. What, what's what's kind of your thoughts on that? 
Yeah, Rocket League is a mental grind at times, you know, it's tough to stay locked in and when you get comfortable with a lead like 6-0 and I don't know what the last game ended up being, 5-0 or whatever it was. Yep, 4-0. 4-0, it's tough, it's tough to stay locked in, you know, going forward. Uh, you tend to get a little sloppy as as the end of the game nears and sometimes you got to be careful because that can carry over into the next game that starts right back at 0-0 so yeah that that's going to be interesting too because we've seen this script before jakey you and i going just dominating the first two games and then they lose the third game and definitely threatening a reverse sweep kind of situation but you know, it, 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 like you mentioned, Jakey, it goes back to 0-0. Zero, zero. Still could be anybody's game. Buena Vista looking for a reverse sweep here. Certainly Buena Vista looking to try to ride the momentum of that, that first goal of the series. And you and I really looking to put this series away. Yeah, so if you are Buena Vista, Jakey, what, what do you have to be doing to try and get a reverse sweep going? Yeah, you just... You got to try something different, you know, whatever whatever they've been doing up to this point uh, clearly hasn't been working for them. So you got to mix it up a little bit individually and as a team, you know, you got to try to try to get something going. But here we go. TJ able to get this one down and in from the right hand side. Uh, AJ kind of passed it long distance. And do you think that was a coordinated play, Jakey, or or was that just by chance? I think TJ saw the open net opportunity for AJ and said, I'm going to sit right here and see if I can't steal this goal from you, which is what he ended up doing. <laughs> what? Goal stealing in my Rocket League? Impossible. Never happens. <laughs> <laughs> oh, these guys love to do it, too. <laughs> well, it's just part of their suffocating offense. They want to make sure that they get that goal in and get it in as this ball just barely goes in as... AJ and Tonkin able to get this one to the save, but a double commit there on the right-hand side. Bulk and C Maestro can't get it to go, and they pay for it. AJ goes coast to coast. Yeah, AJ, very smart here. He knows he has time. The ball sitting in front of the net, but he takes his time anyways. It creates a one-on-one -on -one opportunity with him and Ryan, and AJ gets a nice flick over him. All right, 2-0 the score with 2-0-3. So we're kind of done in a way in this matchup. Now at 3.53 left to play. Still, if you're Buena Vista, you can come back from this. Is Bulk able to get a demo on a UNI member? It's sort of kind of a little jousting here. Pace is slowing down, Jakey. It is. The ball got stuck in that corner for a little bit there. It really slowed the game down and uh, kind of put people out of their rotation. But uh, here we got to clear out maybe a chance to reset for both teams. As this ball is going to go ahead and get lazily shot on goal, but Ryan, again, that clutch third player for this Buena Vista squad, able to get that one passed and save. But AJ, he's going to work the right hand side, tries to get an aerial. Ryan, again, just very good third man back here. C Maestro is going to work that right hand side, double oh. commit and an own goal. Very good by C Maestro here. Uh, TJ and AJ went for. A very aggressive play, left Tonk back by himself. He's able to get the touch over Tonk and uh, quickly send that one towards you and I's net. I think TJ probably had a chance to save that, but I don't think AJ knew he was there. They were kind of rushing back and um, unfortunately ends up putting that one further into the back of the net. The Maestro trying to put the dagger here, fakes it out. Ryan ties it up. Right, Jakey, we, we go. What, what have we seen this script before? Someone needs to change the script. Someone needs to fire those people. Because <laughs> we might be saying the same thing that we saw at 7 o'clock today. Yeah, I, I certainly hope not, but it's it's starting to become a real possibility here. Hopefully you and I can close the door and close it fast, because here comes Buena Vista. Yeah, see Maestro able to get that one saved in a way. He's going to take it right-hand side. He defers the boost, so maybe that's some rotational... Talk there is Bulk. Gets it. Just left hand side quickly saved by AJ. TJ's going to work it. Right hand side. He'll defer to Tonkin who takes it center up. TJ misses the bump. And C Maestro is going to try and squeeze it out. Right hand side. He'll work it left. And AJ will bump it. Pinch it. TJ. Right hand side saved by Ryan. Pace of play has been picking up. 
a full tank of boost there for Bolt. Another opportunity, this one in the zone. We're seeing a little more passive plays come out from both teams, which is what you love to see. Uh, it's creating a lot of action for the viewers, especially, and uh, a lot more chances for goals to come through. Hawk unable to get his for, uh, second save of the series. And you and I trying to put the dagger here in a game set match, but Univista will not go silently into that night. Tonkin's gonna take a full set of boost. He'll defer it over to AJ. Working the offense, centered up. Bolt, right hand side. He'll pass and defer and just a triple, a scrummage right there in the left hand side. Yeah, the teams are getting a little tangled up. Univista and able to break out of a tough spot here. Tries to get the shot on goal. No one's there to save it away, and that is going to count as a save from TJ, as that was the dagger for Buena Vista if they wanted to, to get one. Yeah, I, I think they were really hoping that one came through for them. We saw an air touch from a UNI player just about go back into the, into the back of the net for a second on goal of the game, but uh, it was able to bounce off the, the post, and UNI was able to get it out. All right, Tonkin's going to center this up. 50 right there. Comes down real hard to see Maestro able to get that save. AJ's going to work it. Right-hand side pass to Tonkin. Goes back in, tries to fake out. Ryan to steal it away. Bumps to see Maestro. He'll get that worked right-hand side. 35 seconds left to play. Could we go into overtime, Jakey? It's definitely looking like a real possibility here. You know, anything can happen in these last 30 seconds, though. So both teams got to be on their toes. Ooh, right there, TJ from the right-hand side, Ryan to quickly save it away. See, Maestro can't get it to go, and AJ able to follow it up, center mass. Yeah, Ryan had to put one off the post there to keep it out of the net the first time, and that created an opportunity for Tonkin to follow up on the rebound. He puts it off the backboard for AJ. Just a, a great play all around from all three of the Panthers. 19 seconds if Buena Vista wants to get this to go into a game four. Otherwise, you and I is gonna win both of their double he both of their games in this double header of an evening. Eight seconds now, AJ, he's gonna play off to the right side. He wants to go home. He wants to be done for the day. And TJ is going to put the final dagger in with one second left. Really nice looking pass here from AJ. Uh, we don't get to see it in the replay, unfortunately, but he puts it off the sidewall, is able to pop it out to the ceiling, getting the ball to drop right down in front of the net. And TJ is able to get the tight angle in to more or less seal the deal here for the Panthers. All right, the ball is going to lazily go down, and you and I wins it. Sweeps another one in Midwest A Conference play. Jakey, what did you like from, uh, of course, this Buena Vista game, and what did you like overall? Yeah, I, I really liked uh, that the Panthers showed up today, you know, like I was mentioning in past seasons, they've had a history of kind of playing to other teams' levels, no matter whether it's a team that's 0-4 or a team that's 4-0, you know, which is good when you're playing those teams that are on paper better than you, but when you have teams that on paper have a little bit of a skill gap, that can be detrimental at times, but it seems like the script is flipping a little bit here in this season, as you mentioned earlier in the first broadcast. Uh, this, I think this is you and I's third or fourth sweep of the season. So, Yeah, it's really exciting. And that's another thing that I kind of want to mention is that you and I is definitely playing for a top seed in Midwest A Conference play. Of course, the, the top four teams will go on to the playoffs. And then from there, it is single elimination. And it's going to be exciting. Currently, the only one to kind of be in the way of the top seed is going to be Carroll University White, who is currently uh, undefeated in the season. So I'm looking forward to that matchup. Of course, the only loss that UNI has is against that Carroll team. So lots of exciting matches coming up, Jakey. Certainly, and as you mentioned earlier, they were able to take care of that game five, and I think I think you and I will really be um, excited for that rematch if it were to happen. Yeah, 
looking forward to it. Well, ladies and gentlemen, if you would uh, scroll on down to the merch tab here in Twitch, go ahead and look at you and I esports gear. Uh, you will be helping and supporting the team if you can uh, go ahead and purchase some of that. Uh, T-shirts, hoodies, and fully customizable jerseys are there for the taking. Uh, you just have to go ahead and click on the link. Otherwise, the next time we'll see this UNI Purple team will be not next week. They technically played that game today. Uh, they will be playing against Northern Illinois University Husky Gaming on March 15th. I'm sure that we will have the UNI Gold matchup next Friday and also looking forward to uh, League of Legends that is going to be on Wednesday and Thursday you and I gold and you and I purple looking to try to survive and make it to the playoffs well Jakey any final thoughts as we are going to sign off for the evening I'm proud of the boys we got we got split with a double header tonight and uh, it's been it's been fun casting this one with you Jaeger yeah, pleasure to have you in the booth, Jakey. Igneous is in production. As always, the, the sharp look and sharp minded Jakey in the booth with me. I'm Jaeger. See you next time. You and I Rocket League improves to five and one. Three of those being straight sweeps. Exciting playoff look for this you and I purple team. See you next time. <laughs>